Good day everyone! For today's video, I am going to discuss the qualitative characteristics, orientation, type, and magnification of images formed by mirrors. Our subtopics are reflection of light, refraction of light, types of images, types of mirrors, images formed in plane mirrors, images formed in curved mirrors. Class, what can you see when you look at a mirror, or a polished metal, or a steel pool of water? Okay, you can see your image. Bakit po kaya? So the reason why we can see our image is that these objects are image reflecting objects. A mirror is a smooth reflecting surface usually made of polished metal or glass that has been coated with metallic substances. So when we say reflection of light, this is the bouncing off of light rays when it hits a surface like a plain mirror. So pinaikling uh, definition, reflection of light is the bouncing back of light. So, ano po yung mga halimbawa ng reflection of light? So, we have here the incident ray. Incident ray is the ray of light approaching the mirror. So, kung makikita nyo dito sa screen, yan po yung incident ray. Siya yung ray na tatama sa ating mirror. Next is the reflected ray. Reflected ray is the ray of light leaves the mirror and is represented by an arrow pointing away from the mirror. So for example, ito yung light from the incident ray, ayan, and then tatama siya sa mirror and then magre-reflect. Siya yung tinatawag nating reflected ray. Next is the normal line. Normal line is an imaginary line that can be drawn perpendicular to the optical element. Ayan, so kung mapapansin nyo, ito po yung normal line. So we have here the law of reflection of light. The first law of reflection of light states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. For example, yung angle of incidence is 25 degrees. It means yung angle of reflection ay 25 degrees din because they are always equal. The second law of reflection of light states that the normal line, incident ray, and reflected ray all lie in the same plane. Ibig sabihin nito anak, ang incident ray, Reflected ray at normal line, lahat sila nakalay sa parehong plane or mirror. Next, we have the types of reflection of light. We have a specular or also known as regular reflection and diffuse reflection or also known as irregular reflection. So ano ang pinagkaiba nitong dalawa? Kapag po sinabi nating specular reflection, as you can see, malinis talaga siya or parang equal or perfect reflection ika nga. Pero kapag sinabi naman nating diffuse reflection, mapapansin nyo na diffracted siya or kung saan-saan napupunta. Ang example ng specular reflection ay itong nasa screen. As you can see, parang copy-paste talaga. Diba? Well, the diffuse reflection naman, kung mapapansin ninyo, parang blurry or blurred talaga yung image na naproduce. So, what is refraction of light? Refraction of light is the bending of light. Kung mapapansin nyo yung nasa picture, hindi naman talaga putol yung pencil, right? Pero parang putol siyang tingnan. And the reason kung bakit ganyan yung nakikita natin, dahil po yun sa pagbend ng light. So paano nga ba ito nangyayari? Ganito po siya anak. Kung ito yung incident ray or main source of light, tatama siya sa lens and magkakaroon ng pagbend 
at kung titingnan nyo ng mabuti, nakabend yung ray. Hindi po siya nakadiretso. Ang incident ray naman ay pwede ring tumama dito sa may left side or magre-reflect siya. And we all know, kapag nag-reflect ito, same lang ang kanilang angle. Ano po? So kung ang angle of incidence is 30 degrees, obviously ang reflected ray natin ay 30 degrees din. So why is spear fishing so hard to do? Which table can come with an explanation first? So kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung source of light. And nagkakaroon na ng bending of light. And kung tatanungin kayo, nasaan po ba talaga yung fish? Kung mapapansin nyo nak, ang paningin natin, ano po, yung fish andito sa part na to. Pero, nasaan talaga yung fish? So, andito siya sa part na to, and dahil yan sa pagbend ng light. Kaya kung ikaw yung nandyan sa situation na yan, alam mo kung saan o kung paano mo matatamaan ang fish. Okay po? Next, we have the types of images. So, we have here the real or virtual. When we say real, real is always inverted while virtual is always upright. Please take note of that, anak. When we say real image, the image is inverted, like this one na nasa screen. And napoform ito sa harap ng mirror. And the size depends on the location of the object with respect to the mirror. So mamaya po ipapakita ko sa inyo ang ray diagramming kung paano nakikita ang real image. And the other one is the virtual image. Virtual image is always upright. Parang nananalamin ka. Ano po? And it formed at the back of the mirror. And the size depends on the use of the mirror. So, nakadepende siya sa gamit ng mirror kasi ano nga ba ang types ng mirrors? As you can see, we have plane and curved mirror. What's the difference between these two? In plane mirror, the reflecting surface is flat. As you can see, meron tayong virtual image. So, pag nananalamin ka, yung right hand mo, nag-a-appear siya as left hand sa image. Ang tawag po doon ay lateral inversion. Ano po yung lateral inversion? This is the reversal of mirror image where the right side of the object appears on the left side of the mirror. Again, the left and the right of a mirror image appears reversed or pabaliktad or tinatawag nating lateral inversion because of how we perceive the mirror image. So, we will start by analyzing the image that the mirror has formed. So, when you stand in front of a mirror, your reflection stares back at your right. This reflection is oriented correctly as your top is the top of the image in the mirror. So, your head and feet are pointing in the same direction also. And the phenomenon where your left appears as the right and vice versa in a mirror is referred to as lateral inversion. A very similar thing happens if you write a word, let's say mirror, on a piece of paper and keep it in front of the mirror. Can you read what you have written on the paper from the image you see in the mirror? you will find that the word mirror is reflected like this. Another example, let's say a reverse, which is reflected like this. How a mirror reverses the left-right has only been very confusing, right? Well, here is the answer. The lateral inversion we experience is not caused by the mirror. 
but by our perception of the mirror of the image. This means that a mirror does not reverse left and right contrary to how we see mirror images. Instead, it reverses the front and back, where your back should be your face is, and your brain assumes this to be another person standing in front of you, and assumes the left and right reversed, and that is lateral inversion. Another type of mirror is curved mirror. The reflecting surface is a section of sphere, yung parang pabilog. Ano po? So we have the kinds of curved mirror. We have concave and convex. At kung sa spoon anak or kutsara, ano po, ang concave ay yung front side, while the convex side ay yung back side ng spoon. So anong pinagkaiba ng concave mirror sa convex mirror? Kapag po sinabi nating concave mirror, the reflective surface bulges away from the light source. So kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung light source tatama sa concave mirror. At magkakaroon ng bulges away at nagkakaroon ng converging or nagkakaroon sila ng converging point. And concave mirror is also known as converging mirror. Sa convex mirror naman, kabaliktaran lang siya ng concave mirror. Kung si concave mirror ay bulges away, si convex mirror naman ay reflective towards the light source. Ano po? Convex mirror is also known as diverging mirror. Next is how are images formed in plane mirrors. Ididiscuss natin ngayon kung paano nafoform yung image sa harap ng mirror kapag tayo ay nananalamin. For example, nak, itong nasa screen. For example, ikaw, ikaw yung nananalamin. Ibig sabihin po ba ng nakikita mo sa mirror ay kambal mo? So, let's check. So, for example, ikaw ito. Meron tayong ray of light. Ano po? At ugaliin natin na mag-extend. So, kapag tumama dito sa salamin yung ray of light, ikaw itong nananalamin. Magkakaroon ito ng reflection. Yung second ray naman, dito naman siya tatama. And kung mapapansin nyo, yung second arrow nag-reflect. So, yung incident ray, Itong pangalawang arrow, naglay ito sa ating plane mirror at nagkaroon ulit ng reflection. Mapapansin nyo na meron tayong normal line, yung blue uh, broken lines sa screen. Ayan. So for example, andito yung source of light, dito sa may body part. Yung light po ba tatago sa'yo? Siyempre hindi, kasi opaque ka. Ano po? So, dito, dito siya sa may upper part or sa may head or tuktok, ano po, magkakaroon ng light source or doon manggagaling yung light. So, kung ikaw yung object dito, may tatamang light ray at uugaliin natin na mag-extend kasi na kung saan magkakaroon ng intersection, doon mabubuo yung image. Please take note na, na kung saan magkakaroon ng intersection, doon po mabubuo ang image. Since dito sa ating screen, makikita nyo sa my left side, walang nag-intersect. So, kailangan talaga nating mag-extend para makita natin kung saan sila mag intersect Ano po? So, ayan, andito na. Ano po? Nagkaroon na tayo ng image. Ano po? Kasi nagkaroon na ng intersection. So, ibig sabihin po nito, ang nakikita natin sa salamin ay hindi natin kakambal. So, ano ang kanyang properties? As you can see, it is virtual. Bakit siya naka-virtual? Di ba diniscuss natin kanina sa type of images that virtual image is always upright? And na-form ang image at the back of the mirror. 
Same size lang, same distance, and laterally reverse. Ano po yung laterally reverse? Yung right side mo mag appear as left side sa image. So ano naman po yung images na na-formed in curved mirrors? Or how images are formed in curved mirrors? Dalawa po yung types ng curved mirrors. We have the concave and convex. So let's study first on how images formed in curved mirrors. The first one here is concave mirror. So as you can see, concave mirror is virtual, pwedeng upright, formed at the back of the mirror, size of the image is bigger than the object, pwede naman pong maging real, inverted, form in front of the mirror, and the size of the image is smaller than the object. So paano natin malalaman kung virtual or real image since pareho po sila? So, the characteristics of the images formed in concave mirror depends on the location. Again, location of the object. Ibig sabihin, nakadepende kung paano or kung gaano kalayo or kalapit sa mirror ang isang object. So, using a ray diagram, matutulungan tayo na malaman kung anong properties meron ng isang image. We have here the principal axis, center of curvature, capital letter F for the principal focus. We have the small f as the foci length, and we have the V as the vertex, and the mirror or a concave mirror. So let's start to locate images in a concave mirror. For example, we have a tree here. Again, ang gamit nating mirror ay concave mirror. Ang rule number one natin, the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis. At yung incident ray na yon ay tatama sa concave mirror. At magre-reflect sa ating principal focus. Next is the second ray na tatama naman sa center of curvature. At uugaliin natin na palaging mag-extend, just in case na wala yung image sa harap at baka nasa likod. Kasi tandaan kung saan po sila magkakaroon ng intersection, nandoon po yung image. So kung mapapansin nyo, yung object na hati sa dalawang part. Pwedeng itong maging A as the head and B as the lower part. For example, I fit or root ng ating tree. Nandoon siya sa ating principal axis. Ano po, pakitingnan, yung root ng ating tree ay nakalagay sa principal axis. Kaya dapat, nasa principal axis din yung lower part ng image. And yung head ng object or upper part o tuktok ng object, doon din magmumula kung saan nag-intersect. Ano po, pakitingnan? Ayan, so ang clue lang dyan is kung nasaan yung root or lower part ng ating um, object na po dapat nandoon din po sa principal axis ang root ng image. So may tinatawag tayong properties of images sa ating qualitative characteristics na tinatawag na lost. So ano yung lost? L stands for the location of an image. Kung saan nabuo yung image. So, kung mapapansin nyo po dito, ang example natin, nabuo siya between C and F. Therefore, ang location natin ay between C and F. Next is O. O stands for orientation of an image. Kung ito ba ay inverted or upright ang image. So, dito sa image na nabuo ay pabaliktad siya. So, inverted ang orientation niya. Next is S. Stands for the size of an image, kung smaller ba, or bigger, or same size lang ng object at sa image. So, dito sa ating example, the image is smaller than the object. Next is T. T stands for the type of an image, kung ito ay virtual or real image. 
We all know, dahil diniscuss ko na to kanina, that real image is always inverted, while virtual image is always upright. Therefore, ang example natin dito ay real image since inverted yung nabuong image. Nakukuha po ba? So, dito sa table, we are going to identify the properties of an image. So, meron na tayong case 1, the object is beyond C. Yung ginawa lang natin ngayon na kung saan kapag ang object ay beyond C, ang location ng image ay nasa between C and F. Ang orientation naman ng image is inverted, size naman ng image is smaller than the object, and the type of an image is real. What if dito sa case number 2, yung object ay nasa C mismo or at C? So ngayon, same steps lang. Let us draw a parallel line na magre-reflect ano po, at tatama sa ating principal focus. And the other one ray is tatama sa center of curvature. Meron na po ba tayong nakikita na nag-intersect? Of course, meron na. Ano po? Ibig sabihin na, andyan po yung image. So, ano yung lost or yung qualitative characteristics ng image? The location of an image ay nasa C or at C. Orientation? Ano po? Inverted ba siya or upright? Of course, since pabaliktad yung image, that is inverted. And yung size ng image naman nak ay same size lang. Ano po? Yung type ng image is real since inverted yung orientation ng image. At higit sa lahat, huwag niyo pong kakalimutan na palaging mag-extend just in case na wala yung image sa harap at baka makita ito sa back ng mirror. Okay, lagay na natin ito sa ating table. Ayan, so next naman na case natin is case number 3. What if, ano po, yung object ay nasa between C and F? So, alamin natin yung qualitative characteristics ng image na mabubuo dito. So, sundan nyo lang yung process na gagawin ko. Ano po? So, draw a line sa top ng object papuntang concave mirror. Next, papunta namang principal focus. Ano po? And the second ray ay tatama sa center of curvature. Kung mapapansin nyo, meron na tayong nag-intersect dito. So, nasaan yung image na nabuo? So, the image form is here. So, let's identify the properties of an image. The location of an image here is located beyond C. Ano yung orientation ng ating image ngayon? Okay, very good. And that is inverted. Sa size naman ng image, is it same size? Smaller than the object or bigger than the object? Ano kaya yun? Okay, so the answer is bigger than the object. So what is the type of an image? Since inverted ang image, therefore, ang type ng image ay real. So, lagay na natin uli sa table. Kung mapapansin nyo na, yung object na nasa between C and F at object beyond C, nagkabaliktaran lang ng characteristics. Kung titingnan nyo po, ano po? So, the object beyond C, ang image location ay nasa between C and F. While yung object, Ano, kapag nasa between C and F, ang image location niya naman ay matatagpuan sa beyond C. And the size naman, nagkabaliktad din. Ano po? Ang next naman nating case ay kapag ang object ay nasa F. Ano po? Ano kaya ang lost or qualitative characteristics ng image na mabubuo? Same process lang po uli anak. Draw a line parallel to principal axis. And magre-reflect ulit ito na tatama sa ating principal focus. And yung second line or arrow, tatama naman sa center of curvature. At napansin po natin na walang intersection na naganap. So try natin na mag-extend baka kasi nasa back ng ating mirror yung image. At ayun, 
Napansin natin na wala talagang nag-intersect. Therefore, no image is being formed kapag ang object ay nasa F. So take note anak, kapag ang object ay nasa F or principal focus, walang image na mabubuo. Ang last case naman natin ngayon sa concave mirror ay kapag ang object ay nasa between F and V or the vertex. Ano kaya yung qualitative characteristics ng image na to? Same steps lang. Ano po, sundan nyo lang yung ginagawa ko dito. Ano po? At makikita nyo po na wala ulit nag-intersect. So dahil dyan, mag-extend tayo ulit. Ano po? At ayun, ano po, nasa back ng mirror ang image. So sasagutan na po natin yung lost. Ano po yung location ng image natin dito? Ayan, so kung mapapansin nyo, it is beyond the vertex. Sa orientation ng image, it is upright. And sa size ng image anak, kung mapapansin nyo, it is bigger than the object. At ang type ng image ay virtual dahil ang image ay naka-upright. So that's all about concave mirror. The last one here, ano po, we are going to locate an image sa convex mirror naman. Madalas nating makita ang convex mirror, for example niyan ay yung ginagamit sa mga sasakyan as side mirror. Sa mga mall, sa 7-Eleven, Alpha Mart, Mini Stop, or any convenience store. So let us locate an image, this time sa convex mirror using a ray diagram. So, meron na tayong um, ray 1, ano po, o yung light ray, magbabounce back siya, and mag-extend ulit tayo, ano po, huwag nyo po yung kakalimutan, at sunod naman yung second ray natin na tatama sa center of curvature. And i-extend lang natin yan ulit, ano po, at kung saan sila mag intersect of course, tandoon po yung ating image. So, ang object natin dito ay nasa beyond the vertex. So, nasaan ang location ng ating image? Ito ay natagpuan sa back ng mirror or at the back of a mirror. Ano ang kanyang orientation? Of course, upright. Kasi hindi naman siya nakabaliktad. Ano po? At ang size naman ng image ay smaller kaysa sa object. At ano naman po ang type ng image? Obviously, since ang orientation ay upright, therefore, the type of an image is virtual. So kung mapapansin nyo, malaki yung um, object dito sa example natin. Pero yung image niya na naproduced ay maliit. So this is the main reason kung bakit ang ganitong uri ng mirror or tinatawag natin convex mirror, ang ginagamit sa mga convenience store, mall, etc. At ginagamit din siya sa mga sasakyan as side mirror. Ano po? So, I hope na marami po kayong natutunan ngayong araw. Ano po, sa talakayan natin patungkol sa qualitative characteristics, orientation, type, and magnification of images formed by mirrors. Lalo na yung paggamit ng ray diagram para malocate yung image. That's all for today. Thank you.